wanted to be leaning back too far. Because sometimes the, if the patient isn't fully engaged in this thing, the chin rest will move, but their head doesn't move. And that's really frustrating because you've got to try to, you gotta try to uh, make up for it. So put your chin on the rest, chin down, forehead right up against the bar. Actually, I, I started a little bit too fast here. I figured mm -hmm. the machine was ready to go, but it is not. It goes through a diagnostic check. It passed. You don't have an archive, so what you're going to do is you click on the on that, and you're a Cirrus operator. Don't need a password, so you just click through that. Um, to start fast track, we don't need to show that again. So we're going to add a new patient. What is your last name, please? Lloyd, L-O-Y-D. L-O-Y-D. Mm -hmm. And your first name? Brenda. Brenda? Mm-hmm. Brenda. B-R-E. Brenda. And your date of birth, please. 1155. And do you use a, an ID number for your patients? For anything else? Uh, usually they're social. Yeah. Okay, well, well we could just, you have to have one in here. There's four things here that are highlighted. Those four things have to be filled up, so I just usually generate an ID. Oh, okay, that's that, cool. That gets it done. And then you save, you save that information. Now, because Brenda's new to this thing, all we're going to do is acquire. So we're going to acquire. Okay. After we've done the scan, then we'll have two choices, acquire or analyze. And you'll see that as we go. So the machine's thinking about it, and it's going to save your information. There we go. It defaults to Mac cubed 512 by 128. That's the most powerful macula scan that you've got. So that's the one you want to default to. This Mac cubed 200 by 200 is a, is a good one. And as a technician, you can't tell the difference, but the doctor can tell the difference okay. in, in the end. I'm going to assume that the most useful things gonna, are going to be the macula cubed, and the optic disc cubed. So the doctor will tell you which one he wants you to do. There are several others here. This five line raster gets finer detail in the in the uh, macula area or a nevus or something like that. And to your segment five, li five line raster would be for measuring the thickness of the cornea or maybe a uh, contact lens fit to see if there's any gap between the contact lens and the cornea. So those are probably be the ones that you're going to use the most. So now, if you would put your chin on the right side, forehead firmly against the bar. Now, we can see that her eye is down here someplace. So this is her upper eyelid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cursor and point towards where I think the, her pupil is at. And I'm going to click once. Wherever I put this cursor is where the machine is going to go to. So I can see her center of her cornea. So I'm going to click there again, and the machine will move to that spot. Now you can see a, a red star there ahead of you. Yes. I want you to look at the very center of that star. And I want you to just blink normally. I want you to keep blinking in a normal way because that will keep your cornea nice and moist. And if the cornea gets dry, then we won't get a good scan. Now we've got the pupil right underneath that red um, centering thing here. But the patient's going to move a little bit, so we'll be going back to this often to try to get this in just the right place. You can use the cursor to move the patient around like, like I'm doing, or you can use the, the arrow keys. You can go up or down, left or right. So, and that will move the patient where you want it to be. We can see here that this is the cube that we're going to be scanning, but we don't have any image over here yet. We can do a couple of things. The first, because we're so close, I will just hit optimize. I always optimize my scans before I do anything, before I actually do the scan. Now the machine found a place where it thinks is the optimal place to have this scan done. We want this B scan image to be in the center of this frame. And that you know that you're right when, when that's in the center. You can see that we have this, this vignetting, this dark edges around here. That's because she has a small pupil. This will work better if a patient is dilated, but it isn't necessary. We can still get a good scan. So now we're in the center here. We've already optimized. Our scan is in the center of this framing. So I want you to blink a few times, please. Open both eyes as wide as you can. 
Stare at the center, don't blink, don't move. Stay right there, right there, and you can blink. What did you click on? Hit capture. capture. Mm -hmm. So we got a uh, nine out of 10 on a scale, which is pretty darn good, especially for having such a small pupil and so much vignetting. So I'm gonna save this image. If I didn't think, if I thought I could do better, I might save the image but go back and try it again, but we're not gonna, we're gonna move on. Let's say that this is a new glaucoma patient, so the doctor wants to do both the macula and the optic disc. Now, when you're looking at the star, the macula, the center of your vision is lined up with it. But we, want, we now want to have the optic disc lined up in the center. So her star just moved off to the left. See it over there? Yes. I want you to look in that direction for me. When she moves her eye, then, then the center moves a little bit. So you just stay right there. Now, we also want to have this inner circle superimposed over the top of the optic nerve, but it's not quite there. So I'm gonna use the, the mouse and, and click the button and I can move that circle and cube around to where I think it's gonna be best. And now I've got that superimposed right over the top of the optic nerve. And we're a little out of center again. Blink your eyes a few times again, please. Don't blink, don't move. Stay right there, right there, and very nice. You can blink. Actually, you can sit back. I just realized that I didn't optimize, but we could do that. Okay. Probably should. But we've got 8 out of 10, which is a, another very good scan. So now, we're going to save that one. Now, I want you to put your chin on the left side, please. And you're, you can see that we left off with the optic disc cube here, and when we came over to the left side, the machine told us we're on the left eye, and now we choose from this menu over here. Because we left off with the optic disc cubed, it defaulted to that. So now her target's off to her right. She can't see it quite yet because we're not in the center. But you can probably see it now, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now we're pretty close here, but look at this image here. It's actually upside down. The um, optic disc usually has a valley to look into. So look at the very center of that little star. Stay right there. Now, we're, we're pretty close to being in the, right, in the right place, but let's optimize again. And the machine should find the optimal spot, and it did really well. And that's really good. So blink a couple of times, please. Open real wide, both eyes, hold steady, don't blink, don't move, stay right there, and go ahead and blink. Excellent, we're gonna save that. And keep looking at the star, it should move to the center. And look right in the center of that star. Very, very nice. And we're gonna optimize it. We're really close where we belong, but let's see if the machine can make it just a little bit nicer. Very good, blink a few times please. Don't blink, don't move, stay right there, right there, right there. Very nice, you can sit back, good work. So now, um, we've got a couple things going here. You have small pupils, and this pupil's a little irregular. See the shape of it? Mm -hmm. And so we, we got some vignetting that we might not have got. If, we, if you were dilated, there probably wouldn't be any of that at all. But we've got six out of 10. If this went down to five out of 10, those, lot, those bars would go red and say, that's not really the best that, uh, that we could do. So six out of 10 is okay. We'd like to get better than that, but chances are we're not going to. So um, if you wanted to try, it's no problem, no harm. Uh, it, it's e you can tell it's easy, quick to get, the, uh, uh, to get the scans. But in this case, we're just gonna, we're gonna stop there and say that's good enough. So we have finished scanning. So our next step is to finish this. We're going to view today's patients, and there's Brenda, and now we have two choices. We can either acquire more, let's say we've got, oh, Dr. City wanted to have a cornea scan too, we can go back and acquire again, or we can just simply analyze. So we're going to analyze this data. Here's today's date. The most recent one is always on top. So I'm going to click on the, on the macula cubed, and we have a drop-down menu that came up. 
the drop down menu tells me all the different ways that I can analyze this same information. The, most thing, the thing that you're going to use the most is going to be the macula thickness OU analysis. We want to measure both eyes. The machine knows it's going to choose the other macula uh, um, picture and it says it has. And I've got a, a right eye and a left eye up here. And this is the, the scan as we see it. Now, if a patient wasn't cooperative and actually the macula wound up down here someplace, you can take a hold of these lines by clicking on this little triangle and we can move that line. So, for example, if for me. There we go. And then click it correctly. And then we can take a hold of this, what it calls the horizontal line, and move it here. And then we can, if that's the spot we wanted to measure, we would measure that and we'll change the values that are in here. But because our patient was so cooperative, we were in exactly in the right spot. So let's just move it back there again. that little divot that you see in there is, is a typical macula. Um, you'll find some patients don't have a little divot there, so you can't let that throw you off if, if, it, if, it's, if it's a bump up. There's probably some swelling underneath the retina, and that's what doctor wants to know about, so we want to be able to see that. So we have the macula cubed, OU analysis. We, can, we really have just two choices, print preview or print no preview. Most times you just say print no preview because you don't need to see what the print is going to look like. But just for the sake of it, we're going to show print preview. And this is the format that it's printed in. Right eye, left eye. Um, and the reason that you don't necessarily want to print the preview because now I have to click up here in the corner to print. It'll say, are you sure you want to print? And I say yes. And it'll print. And then we have to X out. So I've got three more clicks that I have to make in order to see the preview, and I don't need to. So we're going to click on the optic disc cube. Once again, um, RNFL OU analysis is what we want to have. And there it is again. We've got uh, oh. um, the right eye and the left eye, and I'm going to print no preview. Now, when you look at this thing, you can see this red line that's across the top here. And usually that just helps the doctor show what the contour is of that. But sometimes there's a detail in here someplace that he wants to see that he can't see because that red line is there. So if we go up here to this icon and we click on that, it takes that red line away. And uh, as I'm looking at this, I just realized that we could have done better because we're missing the top edge of that. We should have lowered this whole thing a little bit more when we actually did the scan. Uh, and so again, you can, you can see these things and go, oh yes, that's, that's what that needs to be like. Um, one other thing that you can do is, is you can go up here to Tools, and there's, it says Colored OCT. If you click on that, it takes the color away and turns the pictures into black and white. This is helpful to, to the doctor sometimes because it makes the better contrast to see the layers of the retina. Um, most of the time, it's not going to make a difference. But occasionally, there will be something the doctor will see that uh, he, uh, some drusen in the retina that was there that he wanted, he wanted to see in more detail. Sometimes this would be helpful. It would be something that you'd come in and go, let's look at this in black and white. Um, <clears throat> there are different ways to analyze all this. Um, 3D visualization is interesting. It really doesn't give the doctor any more information 